Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Lou Perus from Veritas.iq. How are you today, Lou? Doing fine. How are you? Great. And of course, uh, I was doing some research about you because you came heavily recommended to me and you recently spoke at a conference in Switzerland about the effect of electricity prices on the production of ferro alloys. Now that looked like a really fascinating presentation. I know our, our Investor Intel audience will love this. So can you just give us some of the highlights, please? Sure. Uh, you know, the electricity is a, uh, can significantly impact the production of ferro alloys um, because it's typically we're talking about um, a process that requires almost as much electricity as the aluminum aluminum process. So electricity is a cost driver here. That doesn't mean necessarily though that that's the only thing to be considered when deciding a new factory location. And so in this speech in Switzerland what we talked about was how electricity can really play a part in the deciding factor of a new factory or an existing factory. But it's not necessarily the only thing and that really goes to show that this, uh, the production of silicon and ferro alloys are extremely complex um, and you have several mitigating factors in, this, in the operation. It's also important to accept some environmental responsibility here. Um, when we're talking about very large uh, industrial uh, intensive silicon manufacturing uh, facilities that require a lot of energy, it's very good to pick locations that have a high renewable mix uh, in the grid especially when we combine that with silicon, because silicon on the downstream is used to produce photovoltaic uh, devices. So when we use this, when we have a situation where we have a high energy intensive production facility in a renewable, let's say, uh, location, and combine that with silicon, it really kind of adds a lot of credence to projects um, uh, because of the current environmental situation. Okay, that's very interesting to our audience. And speaking of interesting, uh, with the Viridis Dot IQ. Can you just correct me for our audience so we all can say this properly? Go ahead, Lou. Sure, it's Veritas.iq. Okay, fantastic. So with Veritas.iq, I think I finally have it here, um, <laughs> you're heavily involved in something called a hybrid flex project, which frankly sure. I didn't know anything about prior to this interview. And it looks fascinating. Can you tell us, can you start with an introduction and then tell us about this, please? Thank you. Sure, no problem. The hybrid flex is actually a complex name for a very simple concept, um, which is basically to uh, design the factory, a ferroalloy factory, from the beginning that will allow it the most broadest uh, production profile as possible. So uh, many times, in fact, there's many, many silicon manufacturing facilities around the world and ferrosilicon manufacturing facilities around the world that produce the other product because these products are very similar uh, in, 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 in chemistry and in production processes. So. The idea here behind the hybrid flex is just that we allow from the initial design phase, from the engineering, from the equipment, construction, and process design, we build in the flexibility for the plant to flex in either direction. Okay, And whether that's involving additional raw material handling systems or storage areas or a, a very um, flexible electrode system, this allows the, the plant to flex either way and allows the project owner to access two markets that are quite disparate uh, and do not overlap. Basically the in-use market for ferrosilicon, which is the steel industry uh, in the U.S., and the silicon uh, downstream market is basically the chemicals, photovoltaics, and aluminum industry. Okay, that's very fascinating to me. So this is very cost-effective and very futuristic. I, I, I like this a lot. Can you talk to me a little bit more about uh, a couple more of the competitive advantages? Obviously there's a, there's a cost advantage here as well. Mm -hmm. Typically when, uh, if a silicon manufacturer wants to convert to ferrosilicon or vice versa, um, there's a process that has to happen and this takes time and this takes money as well and it takes a lot of money in terms of re, um, reorganizing the, the furnace environment and, and reformulating uh, the process. And it's not something that's done day to day by the way, it's something that's done on a very systematic and very fundamental uh, rationale based on the project owner's motivation in the market. This is not uncommon for silicon producers or ferrosilicon producers to flex the other way. The difference here is that we're talking about a greenfield facilities, that we're planning greenfield facilities that can do this from the beginning. And this allows an increased um, uh, ability to transition in a low amount of time and therefore have a low transition cost uh, and allows the, um, uh, the higher scale of a flex plant to bring procurement benefits to the project owner. So, of course, Lou, you were brought to our attention through our client, Canadian Metals, 
and uh, they uh, are using your engineering firm to commence their preliminary economic assessment studies for the implementation of a ferrosilicon plant in Quebec. Now obviously you see a lot of attributes in Canadian metals for you to be working with them with, with such a prominent background. I, I loved your website. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Sure. Um, so our firm specializes in, in silicon-based industrial manufacturing projects around the world. Um, including downstream photovoltaic manufacturing projects. Um, so the company is kind of seen as a technology and, and know, uh, knowledge transfer leader uh, in the industry when it comes to silicon manufacturing uh, and, and photovoltaics. Um, as a neutral and let's say independent uh, engineering and advisory firm, um, we're often brought in to, to bring know-how transfer to project owners that don't have it or cannot buy it or cannot get it from their competition, let's say. So this is kind of how we fit into the whole project. Um, for new project owners like Canadian Metals, it's very difficult, um, or let's say it's not easy for them to gain process experience, um, and therefore they have a high barrier to entry in the market. So we, what we kind of do is bring a ladder. So we bring a ladder to our clients so they can get over that barrier and then compete with the existing silicon manufacturing industry. Well, it sounds to me like you're bringing a ladder to uh, uh, expediting offtake agreements. So that's what it sounds like to me. Were there any other uh, interesting attributes for Canadian metals that you would uh, like to mention to us? I think that the, the U.S. and North American market in general um, is uh, very unique in, in terms of the silicon manufacturing industry. Uh, so there are some unique benefits to being there uh, for Canadian metals. And typically, um, we look for several key factors in, in projects that make sense. Do they have good infrastructure, industrial infrastructure? Do they have good electricity prices? Uh, are there good raw materials available? And are there skill sets available? And is there capital available? And in this case, Canadian Metals has pretty much hit all five of those things. So I think that in the sense of um, putting those five categories inside a market that has a unique characteristic, uh, has a premium market basically in North America, I think this is a big advantage for Canadian metals. And then just one final question. Because of your expertise, I'm fascinated with where a hybrid flex is going in the future. Can you just talk to us a little bit about where you see this going? Right now, there are several uh, greenfield factories being planned around the world for silicon and ferrosilicon production. And many of these projects have the capability to introduce this flex concept. Um, up to recently, there hasn't been that many greenfield expansion of silicon manufacturing uh, in the world. I would say over the last 30 years, maybe there's only been one. So, in fact, this is an opportunity for new projects that are being implemented around the world to introduce this concept from the early design phase uh, and, avoid, and uh, avoid cost in transition later on. Well, Lou, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much.